Hello, in this video we're going to determine continuity from a function. Uh, I have my first function right here. I have f of x equals 2x squared minus x minus 3 all over x plus 1. Uh, now remember that we had the following theorem from a few videos ago that states that the following functions are continuous on their domain. Now what we have in this example is a rational function. And so the rational function is continuous on its domain. Well, what's the domain of this function? And we've done a couple of these already. The domain, basically, you can plug anything you want into here, right? That's just a normal polynomial. Uh, but we can't plug anything we want into this because it's on the denominator. So we can say that um, the function is continuous uh, on the interval, and we can say from negative infinity to negative one, and then from negative one to infinity. Notice all we're doing here is putting the parentheses on, that's a minus by the way, by the way, uh, putting the parentheses on the negative one just means to skip negative one. But then after you go past negative one, you go off to infinity. So in other words, what this is saying is it's continuous except where x is negative one. But that makes sense because when x is negative one, right, you can't, well, you divide by zero and you can't do that. Okay, so that's my first example. Let's try another one. Now in this example, uh, we couldn't have x equal, well, in the past example, sorry, we couldn't have x equal negative one because we divide by zero. So what we do is we say, you know what? Well, when x equals negative one, we'll just say the y value is negative five. So now that my function actually exists at negative one, let's figure out if it satisfies all the requirements for continuity. Now, first requirement for continuity was that the uh, point has to exist. f of negative one has to exist. So what happened was when we looked at this function, Right, x couldn't be negative one. But now that I added this little piece, I know what x or f of negative one is, right? Because now I'm just basically saying f of negative one is negative five. So check, f of that negative one does exist. The second requirement is does is does the limit of f of x exist as x approaches negative one? Okay, so now this is when x equals negative one. So when we're dealing with the limit as x approaches negative one, we really don't care about this. Um, this is what my function is acting like when x is not negative one. So when I say the limit of f of x as x approaches negative one, it's the same thing as saying, the limit as x approaches negative one of this function. Now I just need to know what happens when I plug in negative one. Again, you're gonna get zero on the bottom. All right, we already checked that. But what about the top? You plug in negative one, you're gonna get zero on the top. Because negative one squared is a positive one, so you get two times one, which is two. And then you're gonna get minus negative one, which is a positive one. So you have a two, a plus one, which is three, and then you minus three, so you get zero over zero. Now that means that I could probably factor, or that I will be able to factor and deal with this x plus one. So let's go ahead and do that now. How does the numerator factor? Well, it's going to factor to be 2x, uh, what is it, minus 3 and x plus 1. And on the bottom, x plus 1. So then let's, you could do a quick check on this and it should work. Uh, so now you see that the x plus 1s will divide out and you're left with the limit as x approaches negative one of just two x minus three. Now, when we plug in negative one, we get two times negative one minus three, and that's negative five. So the limit exists, so that's a check, and it equals negative five. 
the re last requirement is does the limit as x approaches negative 1 does that actually equal f of negative 1 now the la that's basically saying does step 1 and step 2 equal each other the la and step 2 says the limit is negative 5 and f of negative 1 is negative 5 and so they work out so what this means is that i'm continuous at x equals negative 1 and since I showed in the first example that I'm continue, this piece is continuous everywhere except for negative one. And now I just showed that with the addition of this negative five, I am now continuous at negative one. We can then have a final answer of it's continuous over uh, the whole real number line.